Hello everyone, welcome to Anat AV. Today we will be talking about the gross anatomy of the heart. In detail, we'll go over its surfaces, its margins and borders, the external sulci, the four chambers, and the valves separating the four chambers and their respective arteries. The heart is a conical, irregular shaped organ with four chambers, namely the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. It's placed obliquely in the middle venous dynum. The heart has an apex that projects forwards, downwards, and to the left. There are five surfaces of the heart. They are the anterior surface, the inferior surface, posterior surface or base, and right and left pulmonary or lateral surfaces. The bulk of the anterior or sternocostal surface is formed by the right ventricle and right atrium on the right and the left ventricle and left auricle on the left. The heart in its anatomical position rests on the diaphragmatic surface, which consists of the left ventricle, a small portion of the right ventricle, separated by the posterior interventricular groove. The base of the heart is quadrilateral and erected posteriorly. It consists of the left atrium, a small portion of the right atrium, and the proximal parts of the great veins, which are superior and inferior vena cavi, and the pulmonary veins. The base lies opposite the bodies of vertebra T5 to T8. The right pulmonary surface is formed by the part of the right atrium that does not contribute to the sternocostal surface. The left pulmonary surface is formed by the left ventricle and a portion of the left atrium. The heart has four borders, which are the upper, right, inferior and left, which demarcate the surfaces. The right border of the heart extends from the lower border of the right third costal cartilage to the lower border of the right sixth costal cartilage just beyond the right margin of the sternum and describing a slight convex curve between these points. The inferior border passes from the right sixth costal cartilage to the apex which is normally in the left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. The left border extends from the apex upwards to the lower border of the left second costal cartilage, about 2 cm from the sternal margin. The right border is more or less vertical and is formed by the right atrium. It extends from the superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava. The left border is oblique and curved and is formed mainly by the left ventricle and partly by the left auricle. It extends from the apex to the left auricle, separating the anterior and left surfaces. The inferior border is nearly horizontal and is formed mainly by the right ventricle and by a small part of the left ventricle near its apex. Thus, it extends from the IVC to the apex. The upper border is slightly oblique and is formed by the two atria, chiefly the left. In this specimen, the exact margins of the upper border are hidden by the great vessels. Internal partitions divide the heart into four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. These produce surface or external grooves referred to as sulci. The coronary sulcus or atrioventricular sulcus circles the heart separating the atria from the ventricles. The anterior and posterior interventricular sulci separate the two ventricles on the corresponding surfaces of the heart which can be demarcated in this specimen respectively 
by the anterior interventricular artery and the middle cardiac vein. These two sulci are continuous inferiorly, just to the right of the apex of the heart. The right atrium is the elongated right upper chamber of the heart that receives the superior vena cava superiorly and inferior vena cava at its lower end. Above this, the medial end of the right atrium is prolonged to the left of the SVC, as the right auricle. The right auricle covers the root of the ascending aorta and partly overlaps the infundibulum of the right ventricle. The interior of the right atrium is divided into two continuous spaces by the crista terminalis, a smooth intermuscular ridge, which begins on the roof of the atrium just in front of the opening of the SVC and extends down the lateral wall to the anterior lip of the IVC. On the external surface of the heart, in some specimens, this is indicated by the sulcus terminalis, a shallow vertical groove that passes from the SVC to the IVC. The upper part of the sulcus terminalis contains a sinoatrial node in the epicardium. The part of the right atrium to the right of the crystal terminalis has smooth, thin walls and both vena cavae empty into this space. The, sp the smooth walled part of the right atrium is formed by incorporation of the sinus venosus into the original embryonic heart. The space anterior to the crista, including the right auricle, is sometimes referred to as the atrium proper. Its walls are covered by ridges called the pectinate muscles, which fan out from the crista like the teeth of a comb. These ridges are also found in the right auricle. An additional structure in the right atrium is the opening of the coronary sinus, which receives blood from most of the cardiac veins and opens medially to the orifice of the inferior vena cava above the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve. Separating the right atrium from the left atrium is the interatrial septum, which faces forward and to the right. It forms the posterior wall of the right atrium above the opening of the coronary sinus. A depression is clearly visible in the septum in its lower part, just above the orifice of the IVC. This is the fossa ovalis, with its prominent margin, the limbus fossa ovalis. The fossa ovalis is the remnant of the foramen ovale, which allows blood to flow from the right atrium to the left atrium during the embryonic circulation. The atrioventricular or AV node is subendocardially situated in the right atrium on the interatrial septum, above the attachment of the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve and to the left of the opening of the coronary sinus. Finally, numerous foramina for the venae cordis minimi, the openings of the smallest cardiac veins, are scattered along the walls of the right atrium. These are small veins that drain the myocardium directly into the right atrium. The right atrioventricular orifice is closed during ventricular contraction by the right atrioventricular or tricuspid valve, so named because it usually consists of three cusps. The naming of the three cusps, anterior, septal and posterior, is based on their relative position in the right ventricle. The right ventricle extends from the right atrioventricular orifice nearly to the cardiac apex. It then ascends to the left to become the infundibulum, the outflow tract of the right ventricle. The convex anterior superior surface of the right ventricle makes up a large part of the sternocostal aspect of the heart. The right ventricle narrows as it passes upwards towards the commencement of the pulmonary trunk. The walls are thrown into a series of muscular ridges, the trabeculae carni, which project into the cavity of the ventricle. One of these ridges has broken free and lies in the cavity attached by its two ends to the interventricular septum and the anterior papillary muscle. This is the septomarginal trabecular, also called the moderator band. It contains part of the right branch of the conducting bundle. 
Other projections into the lumen from the ventricular walls form the papillary muscles, which attach to the AV valves via tendinous cords known as cordae tendinae. At the apex of the infantibulum, the opening into the pulmonary trunk is closed by the pulmonary valve, which consists of three seminunar cusps with free edges projecting upward into the lumen of the pulmonary trunk. The superior edge of each cusp has a middle thickened portion, the nodule, and a thin lateral portion, the lunula. The cusps are named the left, right, and anterior semilunar cusps, relative to their fetal position, before the rotation of the outflow tracts from the ventricles is complete. Each cusp forms a pocket-like sinus. The left atrium forms the posterior surface, or the base of the heart, and lies behind the right atrium. A small, bent left auricle projects from its upper border and curves around to the front, on the left side of the infundibulum. The four pulmonary veins enter the left atrium symmetrically, one above the other on each side. The cavity of the left atrium is smooth-walled except in the auricle. Here, muscular ridges indicate that the appendage was the original auricular chamber of the embryonic heart. The entire smooth-walled portion is derived by incorporation of the embryonic pulmonary veins into the atrial cavity. The bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve, is found between the left atrium and the left ventricle. It consists of two cusps, named anterior and posterior. In this specimen, you can see that one of the cusps is partially divided. The left ventricle is a chamber modified to fulfill its role as a powerful pump for the high-pressure systemic arterial circulation. The walls of this cavity are at least three times as thick as those of the right ventricle. It is longer and narrower than the right ventricle extending from its base in the plane of the AV groove to the cardiac apex. The left ventricle has an inlet region guarded by the mitral valve, an apical trabecular component, and an outlet region guarded by the aortic valve. The trabecular carni are well developed. There are two papillary muscles, anterior and posterior, the anterior being the larger. Both are connected by the chordae tendinae to each valve cusp. Here, the chordae tendinae of the posterior papillary muscle have been divided. The aortic vestibule or the outflow tract of the left ventricle is continuous superiorly with the ascending aorta. The opening from the left ventricle into the aorta is closed by the aortic valve. This valve is similar in structure to the pulmonary valve. It consists of three semilunar cusps, with the free edge of each projecting upwards into the lumen of the ascending aorta. Between the semilunar cusps and the wall of the ascending aorta are the right, left and posterior aortic sinuses. The right and left coronary arteries originate from the right and left aortic sinuses. Because of this, the posterior aortic sinus and cusp are sometimes referred to as the non-coronary sinus and cusp. And that brings to an end this video on the gross anatomy of the heart. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share it with your friends or anyone interested in learning anatomy as a subject. I'm Ramit Fonseca and thank you for watching Anat AV.